Greetings, Glitter Gang, and welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. My name is Catherine. It's Thursday night on August 24th, and you're here for Catherine Scraps Live, the December Daily Wallet Box Album. So essentially what we've done is, I know it says we're doing hip to be square. We're just not going to worry about that right now <laughs> because I just had to do what I had to do to get a stream going. So um, just to let you know what's happening at four o'clock this afternoon pretty much as soon as i finished the stream from this afternoon xfinity texted us to let us know that they were doing work in our area and there would be intermittent outages until 1 20 in the morning which i thought was a really specific time but whatever <laughs> so um pretty much when i tried to start the stream we had an outage an upload outage but not a download outage which meant i could see things on the internet but i couldn't send things up on the internet very well that seems to have resolved um but if we run into struggles again we'll just call it early which is frustrating because you know, we had just decided that if weather was going to be bad, we're going to do afternoon shows and the weather was not only and the weather was not supposed to be bad. So we thought, OK, we can do a night show. And here we are. The weather is bad. It's just raining Xfinity. <laughs> so um, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, hopefully it'll be OK. But this show may just end very abruptly. OK, <laughs> and I apologize in advance if that happens. So thank you so much for everyone who hung in there. Um, if you can see and hear everything like normal, please type a 100 in the chat. If you don't see a chat where people are typing numbers like 86 and 100 and that, you may be in the old chat from the previous broadcast. You might want to just refresh a couple times until you see a chat where people are um, typing 86s. So you'll see Gretchen typed an 86, Bev, Carol, Melanie, Candy, um, lots of people typing 86s. If you see a bunch of 86s, you're in the right spot. And okay, so yeah, we're not doing the hip to be square happiness personified album. We finished that album, but here, you, know, you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so tonight we are working on this first wallet. And one of the things that um, we wanted to do with this, uh, what that we talked about this afternoon was we got all the, um, we got all the uh, photo mats prepped and ready to go. So I wanna make some custom, like cute custom things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a custom cover for this so that when we open it, it's got like a cute little scene on the front. We're gonna make a custom cover for this one. We're gonna, make a custom little journaling spot for this tag and we're gonna make some little custom journaling spots to go on the inside of this gatefold and we're gonna do all we're gonna make enough we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see what we do there because i want to get those in place before i start deal, dealing with pattern papers the other thing we're going to do is we're going to make a custom cover for this piece which is five uh by five or is it five by five i want to say it is it is it's five by five and then also there's going to be a folder in here we still have to make because i just forgot that this wallet had a back so we still make photos for those but that's okay we'll just do it the same as the second insert from the inside so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up photoshop and um make some new files and we'll start with um we'll start with the four by sixes so we'll start with the six and a quarter by four and a quarter that we need to go on the front of that landscape piece and then we'll move to the um the four and a quarter by six and a quarter and the five by five and we'll just go from there so we're gonna get some really cute stuff i think done tonight um for this but uh you know um, I just need to get all the pattern paper open right now, all the designer paper. And I'm going to try and go not slowly exactly. Um, 
but what I am going to try and do is, um, I am going to try and, um, make sure I'm explaining everything clearly, going slow enough to explain what I'm doing. So, and this is the Simple Stories Mix and a Mingle collection. So, let's go ahead and switch. All right. And I'm going to move you guys to where I can see you. Okay. All right. So let's open some more stuff from the collection. Just so we have all our options available. and get to crafting. And for some of them, we may just use the existing uh, four by six things that they have made for the collection already. I'm just gonna ignore yeah, some of these are really cute. They're four by six cards. And what we can do is we, we just need them to be slightly larger so we can make a background with them. So um, I'm also going to open a few papers in uh, from Journaling Basics by Paper Phenomenon so that we have some journaling paper as well. Um, although there are journal elements in the collection, so maybe we won't need to do that. Oops. And there are also tags which we can manipulate as well and maybe do some stuff with. Okay. So first, so first, um, when we're talking about working in Photoshop, there's a couple things you need to know. So, um, everything that you work with in Photoshop is a layer and you just think of it as you're adding layers of things onto a piece of paper, like a collage. Okay. So think of Photoshop, like a collage, you're making a collage and each element that you add is a layer. All right. And so the most important thing is you never want to be working on a background. And so if you, if you see, and I know that the computer screen is pretty big, so um, it's hard to see, but if you see over here in this upper right corner, it says background, okay? While it's a background, I'm not gonna be able to manipulate it. I'm not gonna be able to use it. I'm not gonna be able to, to, to really do much to it. And so anything that's a background, you need to right click and then see here, it'll pop right up. It's the first thing that pops up with you right clip layer from layer from background. And you just say, okay, I want to. And so now it's a layer and not a background. And so now it's a piece of my collage instead of the thing I'm making my collage on. So when you're doing this, you're making your collage on a background. So you want to make sure that you can move each piece onto your background, like a collage. So if I go over here, this is going to be my background, right? Okay. And so, and I, now YouTube's crashing again. So I don't know if you can, <coughs> if you can hear this, if everything is still A-OK -okay where you are, please type 144 in the chat. All right. What a fun time we are all having. <laughs> okay. So we know we want to make something that's four by six, roughly thereabouts or very close to four by six. Okay, so it sounds like it's okay, and YouTube just dropped the warning, so maybe we dipped for like a second, but we're okay now. All right, so, so here's an example of, this is a four by six piece. Okay, also the other thing to remember when you're working in Photoshop, and by the way, this is not 
Um, this is not a Photoshop tutorial. I'm just telling you what I do. Is it the best way to do it? I have no idea. I'm not good at Photoshop. There's a lot of good Photoshop tutorials on YouTube that you can look at to get better at Photoshop. Um, I'm just telling you the things that I use the most often. So down here on the bottom, you see this thing called Photo Bin. When you toggle Photo Bin, that's how you see all the tabs that you have open at the top. So see, I have all these tabs open at the top. Down here, if you click, if you toggle Photo Bin on, you can see them all down in this little tray and you can just scroll through them and then you can jump to exactly the one that you want. Okay, and that's very helpful when you've got a lot of things open like I do now. All right, so right now you see that we have, um, this cute little background and it's four by six. I need it to be four and a quarter by six and a quarter if I'm gonna use it in my piece. So there's a couple things I'm gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click it and hold and I'm gonna move it up to the front here um, so that I can see it at the same time I'm disconnected. <laughs> okay, we'll just try this again next week. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Am I back? This is rough. This is rough, friends. I think. Oh, am I back or am I gone? If I'm back enough, type Xfinity is the best internet. If everything is cool, please type Xfinity is the best in the chat. Maybe if we encourage Xfinity to be its best self. Oh no, YouTube says it's gonna, it's. So YouTube, no, I don't, you. YouTube's warning me it's gonna cut me off again so I don't think I'm really back. Um, but anyway, I'll, let me try and get this piece out and then we'll see how we're doing at the end of it. Okay, so what we're going to do is I want to I wanna move this onto the 4x6 uh, background that I made earlier. So down here in the photo bin, this is the four and a quarter, this is a six and a quarter by four and a quarter background that I made earlier. If I want to move this onto that, the easiest way for me to do it is to be on the background, or excuse me, to to go into here and to click and hold and then I can drag it off the screen down into the tray and drop it onto the background. So there we go. Okay. Now in this instance, all we have to do is we can just stretch it. Now the proportions are not going to remain exactly the same, but that's okay because I don't like the way the wallpaper is very pink here on this side, so I'm just gonna stretch it until the wallpaper looks better to me. Um, so that that kind of fixes that problem where there's just too much, there was just too much light pink on that edge. And now that I've stretched it <clears throat> outside of the boundaries, I'm gonna get the cropping tool. Okay, so that's down here under modify. Over here on the left, there's this, this first one is the crop tool. And I just crop it back to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then I check that check mark to say, okay. And that way, anything that was outside the boundary is now removed. So now I've taken a four by six card from the collection and turned it into a four and a quarter by six and a quarter uh, card. And so that worked really well just to stretch it for this particular one. Um, because this particular one, um, the, the boundaries are kind of blurry. Um, so I'm getting a warning again, just FYI, I'm about to go out again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now go back to my photo bin and I'm going to click this and hold it and I'm going to drag it down here onto the 13 by 19 that I use to print. And then that's there, that's ready to go. Okay. So now let's go back 
to our four by six cards and let's find another one that we can possibly use where maybe the that isn't going to work as well. Um, maybe this one. I think it'll still work on this one though. So here's a here's a um, vertical one. So um, what I just did there, the motions that I didn't explain, are I rotated it 90 degrees. So I went into image, rotate 90 degrees right so that it would be straight up and down, okay? And then I went quickly to the zoom tool, which is this first one under view that looks like a magnifying glass. glass. I right clicked it and I clicked fit on screen so that the edges wouldn't be going off the screen. Now I've gotten the select tool back, which is the pointer. I'm gonna go down to the photo bin and I'm gonna move this up to the top so I can see my background pieces at the same time as I see this sheet. And I'm gonna drag it so click, hold, drag, and I'm going to drop it onto the piece that I know is my um, four and a quarter by six and a quarter piece. And this still looks really solid. So I'm just going to go ahead and stretch it until it fits. And then I'm going to kind of center it a little bit. I want to make sure the words look centered. So that looks centered to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, okay, that's how I like it. I'm gonna get the crop tool and I'm gonna crop it again. And I'm going to, um, I'm gonna crop the edges off. I'm gonna go back to the pointer. I'm gonna go back to the photo bin. I'm gonna drag this down onto that sheet. So this is ready to print as well. Okay, all right. Now, um, what I'm going to do, so now I have the one that I need, the two for the four by sixes. So I need one for the tag that's two and three quarters by five and a half. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a piece, I'm going to make like a journaling spot that is um, two and a half by five and a quarter, okay? Um, so let's go down and look at their journaling pieces that they included in the collection and see if we can find one that we can make look cute at that size. I just have to find them. Okay, so they're here. So we've got this ampersand, which I do think would work just fine. We have this joy, which probably won't work because it is a tag. We've got this beautiful floral piece, which I also love. This Christmas one isn't going to work as well because of the size of our tag. I, and uh, let's do, of all of these, I think the one that I like the best is probably, I like the ampersand and I like this one. And I actually like this one a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, adjust. Now this one I'm going to drag to the bottom because, well, it's making me drag it to the top for some reason. So that's fine. Okay. All right. So we need it to be uh, two and a half by uh, five and a quarter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image. I'm going to go to resize. I'm going to go to image size. And I'm going to tell it I want the height to be 5.25. And that's going to make the width 3.329. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit it on the screen. And I want to make it so that it's just two and three quarters, right? So I can make this not two and three quarters, two and a half. Um, so I'm going to make my crop window two and a half, and then I'm going to take it all the way to the top so that it's the right height. Um, and then what I can do is because it grays out everything that's not in the crop window is before I say, okay, crop here, I can move it around and say, well, do I like it better where I can see the pink line? And I don't because I think it's cutting off some of the more beautiful parts of the floral cluster, which is in this case, the poinsettia. 
So I say, okay, well, I at least want to make sure that I get the center of the poinsettia, right? But then, and if I look here at these two golden leaves, I don't like how I can only see the leaves but not the stem. So I think I want to move it all the way to here so that that's what I'm getting. And so I can say, okay, and I can just crop this, even though it's theirs, you know, it's, it's the original. As long as I don't save it, it will always go back to normal, okay? So, you know, whenever I close Photoshop and it always says, do you want to save this? I say no every time because I would rather lose work than save over something that someone else, you know, that I've downloaded. Okay, so now all I have to do is I go back to the photo bin, I get my pointer, and I just drag this down to here and I can put it with its little friends. Okay, so now I need to make two of those, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it and when I click on a layer, okay, remember we're in here, we're working with layers, it's a collage. I'm gonna click on the layer and over here, it will put in blue the layer you clicked on. It'll put a blue bar over it. So you know which one you need to work with. So I know that this is layer four and you can rename them to keep them straight if you want to, I'm not going to but um, you can. And I'm gonna right click this and I'm gonna say duplicate that. And so it's gonna make a copy of it. So now I have two of them. And I'm doing it this way because it has a front and a back, the tag, right? And so I can put the same floral on the front and the back if I want to. And one thing I'm gonna do, just to make it a little more interesting, all right? is I'm going to take the copy and I'm gonna invert the copy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to image, I'm gonna go to rotate, and I'm gonna say flip horizontal. Oh, sorry, um, just kidding. Image, rotate, and I need to flip layer horizontal. So when I said flip horizontal, that flipped to the background, which flipped all the layers on top of the background. So I needed to go further down to flip layer horizontal, which is down here, and that's only gonna flip the thing that you highlighted. So now they're mirror images of each other. So when you turn the tag over, the flower will go from one corner to the other. So just a little bit of spice, just a little bit of spice. So that gives us the front and the back. So, all right, what other inserts do we need to do? So we're doing really well. Okay, all right, so. I've got that done, so you can go back in. I've got you done, you can go back in. You're done, you can go back in your pocket. All right, so now I've got that little gatefold left, okay? And I want to make little journaling spots to go inside that little gatefold. So let's go back down into our photo bin and take a look at our journaling spots again and see what we've got. And if nothing jumps out, we can always make our own journaling spots by um, just using journaling basics from Paper Phenomenon, which is my um, most used journaling collection. We can use something like that and we can add elements from the collection. So like, for example, this ampersand, right? Okay, so I like how this looks, except, you know, I can't flip the ampersand, so I can't make the two sides mirror each other. That's kind of okay, because honestly, I could just take the lines and reuse them if I really wanted to. Um, it just really depends on how fancy I want to get. Ugh, okay, let's, let, let, okay, let's think about it. All right, image resize, image size. Okay, so the height that I need is it's three and three quarters, right? I need, yeah, three and three quarters. Okay. So it needs to be three and three quarters tall. All right. And then width wise, it needs to be just two, just two inches. All right. So I'm going to just fit it to the screen. And I'm gonna say, what two inches can I use? Okay. So this can be cut, we can use the ampersand on one side and the other side on the other, except we have a little corner of the ampersand. So I'll just explain 
how we're going to deal with that. Okay. And it essentially is going to require us to make three crops. So crop number one will be to get the ampersand. Okay. So here's crop number one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it to my sheet where I'm putting all of them. All right. And it's right here. So that's piece number one and it's going to be as is. So then what I need to do is go back to the original that I'm working on. And when you're in Photoshop, control, do, control Z is your friend. So Control Z is going to undo the last thing you just did. All right. So now I can crop it again and I can take another two inch slice. So I'm going to make a two inch crop and I'm going to grab just the extreme edge. And I'm going to say, okay, looks great. Love it. Thank you so much. And I'm going to drag it onto the sheet. All right. So here it is. And now it's here. So I still have that little ampersand. How am I going to deal with that? Okay. The way that I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to go back here. I'm going to control Z. All right. And I'm going to take a half inch slice out of this that's right next to the ampersand, but not on top of it. Okay. Not touching the ampersand. I'm going to say, okay, thank you very much. And I'm going to drag it onto the main sheet. Okay. Now what I need to do, and I'm going to zoom in so this is easier for you to see. So I went to, and got the zoom tool and now I'm just zooming in. Okay. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to line it up. And if I line them up on my guidelines, I, it's easier to not mess it up. I'm going to line it up and I'm going to put that half inch slice on top of what I just did. And then what I'm going to do is I, I know that these two layers, this is layer six and the little slice is layer seven. So I'm going to, I'm going to highlight layer seven. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click layer six. That's going to highlight both of them so I can move them together now as if they are one piece. Okay. But if I want to go a step further, I can merge them into one layer. So now they are one piece. Now they are one piece. Okay. So now this will go on one side of my gatefold and this will go on the other side of my gatefold. Okay. And so I have both pieces. I don't have the ampersand carrying over, even though the ampersand does carry over in the design itself. We've overcome that so we can still use it, even though it's not quite perfect as designed for our purposes. So kind of what I'm trying to do with these digital, these, this little digital tutorial here is I'm going to talk about how we can step up our digital paper usage and our digital embellishment usage where we can use it as designed and we can manipulate, we can cut it, like physically print it out and cut it and manipulate it through cut cutting and whatnot to make it fit our projects. Or we can in Photoshop make it fit our projects. And because of the digital nature and because I can infinitely reproduce it and I can layer it on top of each other and I can merge the designs together, I can really make it perfectly fit and we can do things digitally we wouldn't have been able to do physically so that's kind of like if we're gonna spend all this money on these printers and these programs we can learn at least a little bit so we can really make some cool stuff you know um, and that's really all I'm trying to do here I'm not like I'm not trying to be a paper designer but I, we can be like little paper designers, like baby designers, you know, baby designers. Okay. So what else do I need to do for this wallet? I need to make for the back for the five by five square. Okay. So now we're going to look at things that are square in the collection and think about what would look cute on the back of the piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it over on my desk and in the software, I'm going to flip to my desk really quickly just so we can refresh ourselves what we're doing. Okay. So you see it there. So we got to keep in mind that it's going to be over something blue. So we want to make sure that 
we don't pick something else that's blue or, or what have you. You know, we want to pick something that's going to look good with the blue. Um, maybe something in yellow because the stars, if we look at the colors of the stars, they can help us. We've got a yellow one, a red one, a light blue one, and the pink one. So maybe stick to those colors. Try to try to aim there. Maybe avoid red because we do have this red right here. So let's say yellow, light blue, pink. Okay. All right, so let me flip back to Photoshop. All right, and so here's our squares. So here we have Merry Christmas, which is nice, but we already said we don't, we want to steer clear of like really red things. This sweater I like, but because we have that cut out, something centered like this is not necessarily the best idea. Um, here we have something again that could maybe work if it wasn't so centered and now we have something that's giving me an idea and the idea that this is giving me is because it's not centered I can manipulate this okay this Merry Christmas it is the yellow of the star so it's the right color I can manipulate this to be even more in the upper right corner so right now where it is it's still gonna get a chunk chomped out of it okay but because I have control over the situation, I can manipulate it to make it fit my piece as much as I want to. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down onto the five by five square. Oh, and the other thing I'll do is uh, let me mark with just a black square where the cutout is so I know what to avoid. So I'm just going to measure it with a ruler and I'm going to make a mark with the black square where it is. So two and a quarter up, two over. Okay. So I'm just going to make a black square. So the way that I would do that is over here um, under draw. Okay. So in this draw section here, you see, I have a rectangle. It's not always a rectangle. It's going to be whatever shape you used last. So when you first open Photoshop, it's a splat. It's a splat. Okay, I'm going to move it to rectangle, but just know all the shapes are hiding under it. So a lot of these things, when you click on them, they open trays with more options that you can do down here. Okay, so just be aware that the rectangle tool doesn't always look like a rectangle. <laughs> so we're going to make a two and a quarter by two inch rectangle out of black. Um, black is here in the color palette. I saw that it was already black, so that's what I decided to use. And I'm going to over here make sure that the shape that's black is on top of the shape that's our uh, color. And that's because I want to know when I've moved it to where it's going to work. So... All right, I think I'm going to do a couple things here. I, so I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer. Um, okay, this one. Well, no, 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 no. I want Merry Christmas and the holly to be separate from each other so that I can use it easier. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to the original and I'm going to crop it so that I have something that's just the holly and not any of the Christmas. And then that thing I'm going to drag back to the palette where I'm working, which is here. Okay, so now I have the holly. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the eyedropper tool. So this is under draw again on the left hand side, the eyedropper. If I, I'm going to click on the yellow and it's going to tell me this yellow uh, is hex code, all right? So this yellow that they use to make this has a hex code Delta 3 um, Beta 742. So I'm gonna just right click that and copy it. So I have that hex code and then I'm gonna click cancel. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna make another rectangle and it's going to be, it's gonna cover the whole thing in that yellow. And then I'm going to click and hold that shape and drag it all the way to the bottom so everything is on top of that shape, okay? 
All right, then I'm gonna make another one that covers this uh, holly from the original piece, okay? And then I'm gonna take that one and the original piece and I am going to merge the layers together so that the holly disappears forever. Okay, so now what I can do is I can move these two pieces independently. So that means I can move the Merry Christmas exactly where I want it. And then I can take my holly and move it exactly how I want it. And then I can just put it wherever. I mean, I can make it huge if I want to. That's a little too huge. Let's shrinky dink. The other thing I can do is I can rotate it. So I think it would fit better like this, okay? Now I'm gonna have to get rid of some of the edges, um, but that's okay because um, that'll give me more options. So what I mean by that is I've gotta go back over here and crop it again. It's just so I'm only getting basically the holly. Okay. And now I'm going to drag that back to the canvas where I'm working and I'll get rid of the other one and I'll keep this one and I'll put it exactly how I want it. And then we'll get like so. Uh, what do I need to do? Okay. I think I need the words, but also cropped. So let me go back over here. Okay. So now I'm just going to hit control Z until everything I did goes away. So now I can crop it and grab just the words. I just want to be right up on the words so I can bring them down over the holly leaf's corner. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is just so um, I can delete the layer, but I can also just put it behind the shape that's the background. I can kind of just do, yeah, I can do it however I prefer. All right, Merry Christmas. Should we make it even bigger? I mean, we can make it. Woo. All right, there we go. Okay, now that I have this whole thing exactly the way I want it, I can just drag that black square behind so that no one can see it either. And all I have to do is just um, go to layer, flatten image, and that's gonna put them all into a background layer. And then I can just layer from background and drag onto my main sheet where I'm printing everything, okay? So now that's ready to print. Oh, and we need the four by six to go on the insert that's gonna go in the pocket of this thing, this Merry Christmas. So we need one more four by six. So let's go back to our four by sixes and see what we like. So we've got fa la 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 la, that could work. I like this reindeer, but because the reindeer is on a, oh, here's another teaching tool. Okay, so because the reindeer is on a red background and the insert's going to be red, I don't really want to use the insert, right? But what I can do is I can use my eyedropper tool to pick up the brown from the reindeer's antlers, okay? I can copy that. Then I can go to 
my paint bucket and I can put the brown on the background and now I have a brown background. Okay, so now I can make this work um, in my project without doing any major redesigns to it. Okay, so once again, just really quickly, I grabbed the brown off the reindeer antler. So I know that this brown is gonna match perfectly because I'm pulling the color from the color palette that the designers already ha are ch have chosen and are using with this eyedropper tool. Then I go to the paint bucket and I can just, if I click the paint bucket on a color, it will replace that color with what's in the paint bucket. So um, I just do that on the outside edges and now we're in good shape. All right, so now I can just take this and I can drag it onto the four by six sheet, which is this. It's actually four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'm just gonna, okay, so this one is one where it's not working for me as much as I would like to stretch it. So instead of stretching it, I'll just make a, back, uh, a square of the brown, okay? And then I'm gonna go and I'll move the layer with my reindeer on top. And then what I'll do is I'll just stretch my reindeer. In fact, let's hold up. Let's just delete that layer. Let's go to the photo bin and let's say, make it um, six and a quarter because I know Oh, okay, so it's, if I make it six and a quarter, it'll be too wide. So I actually have to make it 4.25 wide and then it'll be correct. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is now I can drag it onto my four by six palette where I've put that brown cardstock or that brown square and it's gonna just plop it right in the center. And now it'll fit perfectly on the front. So the only problem is Okay, and let me zoom in so you can see it. Is these little white lines for the um, ornaments, they don't go all the way to the top. So I have to think about whether or not that's something that really matters to me um, or if I'm okay with them not going to the top. So let's just say I want them to go to the top. How would I do that? Um, I'll eyedropper to get the exact white they used in case they didn't use white, white, which they did not. So I'm going to copy their white. I'm going to go to the shape tool and I'm, this time I'm going to take, sh instead of a rectangle, I want a line. Currently my line is one pixel. Hopefully that's enough. It's not. So we'll just say, um, let's try two pixels. It's not a very big line. <laughs> so. All right, there we go. All right, so I can take this two pixel line and just merge it with their, oops, with their little tops so that it's gonna look like the line continues. Now, you can see here that the line is kind of in between two and one pixels so I'm just going to cover their entire line with, with it. So it's no big deal. All right. So, and you know, how much of this you do is on to how persnickety are you? You know, how persnickety are you? <laughs> you may not be as persnickety as me and that's fine. All right. There's a second one. Oops. All right. So we've got another one. And now this one really is more like three pixels. So I'm just going to make it a little bit wider. Oops. So it fits a little scooch better.
Okay, that's a little too thick. Let's just make a three pixel line. Let's make a three pixel line. Oops, it's brown though. Okay, that's okay. I can just change the color. That's why you copy the color. So you can change it as needed. So you can change it as needed. Oops, I gotta get rid of shape two. Oops. All right. There we go. And what I'm going to do is part of the problem I'm having is um, that um, I keep moving things when I'm clicking. So I'm actually going to flatten the layer and then I'm going to layer from the background so I can get rid of all the other stuff I've done before and just focus on the strings. All right. So back to the line. So the rest of the lines are fairly skinny, so I think two pixels will be sufficient. So we can just go from there. All right, looking good, looking good. So now I can just duplicate that shape. So I right click it and I say duplicate and then I can just drag it where I need it, duplicate it again. Now drag it here. Duplicate it again and finally drag it over here. All right, and now I'll just flatten it again. And there it is. Now our white lines go all the way to the top. So it's, you know, for the persnickety uh, ones among us, there we go. And so now I can add it to my little thing to print. So I've got the fronts of all three four by six inserts, the front and back of the journaling tab, the journaling on the inside of the gatefold tab, the flap on the back, ooh, the underside of the flap, the underside of the flap on the back can be just, I got an idea. What if we resize this to be the uh, correct size which is four and a quarter, or no, four and three quarters, so 4.75. Um, and then we can just put this on the back of the journaling spot because it already has, or on the back of the flap. So it'll go on the back of the flap. All right, so that'll be that. So I think we've got everything. So now we just have to make sure it's all gonna fit on uh, this one piece, so which can sometimes be a, a pain in the in the tushy. Um, but I'll do my best. All right, are you all still with me? How are you feeling? How's the internet? It seems to have settled down. Okay. All right. All right. So this is like Tetris, you know, you to, to get them all on one sheet. Sometimes you got a Tetris.
All right, now I'm not gonna new it now. I'm not gonna new it now. I'm not gonna do it now. Um, but if I was um, on my own, what I would do is I would take some of the embellishments and I would fill in this empty space so I'm not wasting this paper because that's not enough paper for me to print something else another time. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that now because that's not that's not what we're here for today. It was just to say, okay, how can we get things exactly the size that we need so that they work with our project, that sort of thing. So that's what we've accomplished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get this started printing. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the desk so we can just um, start cutting this all out once it's done printing and get on with the project. So I'm just going to go ahead and send that to the printer and switch back to the desk. All righty. Okay, so let me put some paper in the printer. It insists on being fed paper all the time. It's so hungry. So we'll just get that printed. And while it's printing, we'll make a duplicate of this insert right here. And I'll show you the measurements for it. It's the second insert, the one that, that has the two pieces. Okay, and we'll just do all six of them while we're here. Um, well, I don't think we have time if I'm being totally honest. <laughs> let's let's not worry about it i think the printer's gonna print faster than faster than that so we probably will only get this one constructed so Oops, I cut that too small. That's okay, I have enough, one more scrap left. <laughs> Woo! All right. And then I'm gonna score the seven and a half inch one at six and a half. and get this assembled. And once I've got it assembled, we'll do a recording break. So the Photoshop stuff is all kind of on one video so that the people who are not doing it digitally are not using this collection, um, who are just using their stash, what have you, don't, can just skip over it and not really miss anything. Where's my, I'm missing my T-rib. Oh no, there it is. Oh, phew. I don't like it when I can't find my T-rib. <laughs> I actually think I might need to get a new T-rib eventually because uh, it's lost its curve on the bottom and now it's just flat. But it's still working and it's not doing anything weird to the paper. So I'm going to not get a new one. Until it starts doing weird stuff. But I've used it so much for so long that it's worn flat on the bottom. So <laughs> that's pretty amazing. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But it's, it's got corners now. It's got a corner here. It's totally flat. It's like a... <laughs> so, oop. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
It was the praise that made it stable. It's true. It's true. Comcast was just feeling a little fragile today. It needed praise for Xfinity to feel better about itself. And again, if you're following along, this insert is exactly the same as the insert two that we made this afternoon. No, no difference, no change. Okay. All right. And here we go. Here's everything that we made. How beautiful is it? Look. And everything's exactly the right size to fit perfectly on our project. That's the real, really nice thing. Okay. So I'm going to do a recording break. Okay. And uh, we'll get this uploaded and uh, cut out. And then we'll start putting it all together. And then the pieces and parts that we didn't print special things for, we'll add paper as needed. So, all right. So thanks so much for watching. If you're watching live, just hang tight. Nothing's going to change for you. If you're watching in the archive, just go ahead and click the next video to see the rest of it come together. If you're watching on YouTube, check the playlist for this project for the rest of the videos in the series. So you can see how everything's made. And I will catch you uh, next time. Bye now.